Now let's talk about procrastination. We all procrastinate every now and then, but if it's a habit for you, then we need to fix that before you give yourself high blood pressure. There are a lot of reasons why people procrastinate. So if you find yourself putting something off, then the first thing you need to do is figure out why you're putting it off. This section should remind you of our talk on motivation. Maybe the problem is that you don't think the task is important, or maybe it's simply an unpleasant task. You can challenge your thoughts to explain to yourself why it's important to get it done, or you can offer yourself an incentive for getting it done. Sometimes, if it's close to snack time, I will tell myself I can have my snack as soon as I finish this task. It encourages me to work quickly and get it over with. If you're stuck because you aren't sure if you're doing it well enough, do it badly and then revise it. This is especially helpful with papers. It's okay if your first draft sounds like a five-year-old wrote it. Just don't turn it in that way. Get down the basic information now and then choose a different time to work on revising it. Maybe the problem is you're not sure of what you're supposed to do or what to expect. For example, maybe you know that you should go to tutoring but you don't know to, what to expect and so you keep putting it off. Ask a friend to go through the process with you. You can FaceTime each other as you both go through the process of scheduling an appointment online. It helps, trust me. Maybe you're putting off a task because it's overwhelming. The apartment is a disaster zone and you're exhausted just looking at it. Breaking it down into small, uh, break it down into smaller tasks. Instead of telling yourself to clean the room, uh, tell yourself to gather all the clothing. After you've gathered all the clothing, tell yourself to gather all the dishes or toss trash. Alternatively, just work on it for five minutes. Set a timer and just get as much as you can do in that five minutes. When the timer goes off, you're done for today. Do it again tomorrow. Eventually the room will be clean and you won't be burned out. Have you ever hit the snooze button over and over again telling yourself that you'll still be able to get to work on time? Or told, you'll, told, yeah, told yourself that you'll get that assignment done tomorrow, uh, the day that it's due. But then you lose your car keys, or there's a traffic jam, or the assignment turns out to be harder than you expected. Get into the habit of expecting the unexpected. Also, by blocking out your study time and assigning specific tasks to those times, you will start to gain a more realistic idea of how long it takes you to actually get things done. Finally, sometimes we procrastinate doing something because someone wants to chat and we have trouble saying no. Get into the habit of disappearing during your study times. Shut off your phone and go somewhere where you won't be disturbed. When the library opens, that's a good spot to work. Depending on your housing situation, you can find a bench somewhere quiet to work, or lock yourself in the bathroom, or get in the car and go park outside someplace with Wi-Fi. Either learn to say, I can't talk or hang out right now, or learn to make yourself disappear for long periods of time. You don't owe anyone an explanation for why you didn't reply to their text. You were busy. End of story. General Time Management Strategies Make a calendar and carry it with you. Why? So you don't double book yourself and so you don't forget to write it down. Set regular study periods. Why? Humans are creatures of habit. This increases the likelihood that you will study some time each day. It also maximizes your time flexibility and reduces stress. Study in an environment that is relatively free of distractions and interruptions. Why? So it's easier to focus. And also, the same location leads to better concentration over time. Schedule tasks so that they can be accomplished in a 30 to 60 minute block of time. We can only concentrate for about 30 to 50 minutes. Also, setting a time limit helps us with motivation. And small tasks give us an opportunity to check things off the list. Take short breaks. This gives you time to reset you for concentration for long study sessions. Be specific in identifying how you plan to use your time. 
why so that no time is wasted deciding what to do next and also small tasks give us again the opportunity to check things off the list alternate subjects when you have a long block available for studying this will reset your interest and concentration also to allow you uh, allow yourself to forget and retest your knowledge estimate the time needed for each assignment this will help you plan your time realistically do assignments for the class you dislike first this reduces the chances of procrastination and also reduces the stress of anticipation work ahead of your assignments when possible again to reduce stress and crisis situations and to maximize your time uh, your time flexibility study everywhere and anywhere use note cards or study apps this is so that you can take advantage of wait times and also so that you can review material in lots of different contexts and settings learn how to say no uh, first so you can focus on your big rocks and also to avoid burnout uh, here's a link for some ideas on ways to say no Consolidate similar tasks, such as phone calls and emails, or shopping, bills, and errands. This helps to eliminate interruptions, um, it helps you avoid repeating or missing tasks, and it increases your productivity. But seriously, keep your calendar with you at all times. Finally, be flexible, patient, and persistent. You will have good days and bad days. Be kind to yourself and just take it one habit at a time. Thanks.